Today, I'm talking to Peter Askew, domain investor and onion seller. <laughs> Peter has a great approach to building businesses. He just looks at expired domains, grabs the good ones and builds businesses around them. We'll talk about working in industries that you have no idea about, building up a portfolio of very different projects and the importance of having a good domain. Here's Peter. I've always been interested in how, how you were approaching building a business because that's so different to what I know business building to look like. So that's kind of what I want to talk to you about today. Yeah, I, I, listen, I'm uh, I'm fortunate you even just want to talk. I, and I I don't mind sharing because I took I took a very strange path into all of this and uh, and, and didn't really intend to be a, or be or become a builder. I just, I kept getting laid off, and I wrote a, a big another a big essay about just how I got to where I am. And then lo and behold, I started building. I was like, gosh, this is a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> what else can I learn? Because I didn't come in through the coding side. I kind of came in sort of through the startup side in the late 90s and then got into mainly the marketing and advertising side through paid search, SEO, and then got into analytics. But the more I started like just scraping the surface, I go a little bit deeper and I was like, well, what is this graphic design stuff? How do you, how do you make a logo? Well, I got to figure out how to make a logo. And I, I was originally in paid search and then, you know, paid search is, you know, essentially half of the search engine result page. And so I saw SEO and I was like, well, what is this? This seems pretty important, but okay. In order to get a site to rank, you got to start building and adjusting the text on the page and H1s and you got to have a good host. Hopefully it's fast enough. And so that all st started boiling back down to the domain name. So when I started building sites to teach myself how to do just basic coding, HTML, build tables, add text, change the background color for, I mean, for you, because I know you have have a, a development background, it'd be laughable. But for me, I was like, how does this, what, what happens if I remove the semicolon, the whole you know, site breaks? And, uh, and so I found that f f fascinating. And then I started leaning on WordPress to, to speed up development. And you can make a pretty great looking, and especially these days, a great looking, very capable, robust backend on WordPress is what I tend to lean on these days. But um, yeah, it's it, it very strange. And, and I don't have a business background, never took a coding class, just mainly self-taught through YouTube videos or or just really honestly just getting in there, uh, pulling raw code, uh, opening up a text editor and like making changes and seeing what happens on the page. What happens if I do this? Oh, crap. Oh, gee, a site's down. Uh, let's change it back and push it back up to the site and see what happens. But um, that's that's just the right mindset, right? Yeah, and, uh, I didn't really have a guide, so I was just more wandering around. I, because I was still working a nine to five uh, as a product manager at a few. I still got, I got hooked on the internet, so I kept working day job nine to five, and this, and then I'd come home and and monkey around on the internet, just like, okay, well, what do I do today? Uh, and so I'd need a topic, and so I, I one of the first topics I picked, and it didn't make any sense, but I picked. Uh, the bed and breakfast industry. Um, and I decided to build a little marketplace directory. Just if you want to find a bed and breakfast in Alabama or up in Canada or in Washington state or, and so I, I pre, and it was just like a, a, it looked like the original Yahoo. It was just a bunch of links or click a state. When I got really fancy, I included a, uh, uh, an image and then I hot I hot linked specific states. I thought I had really gotten advanced when I hot linked a specific state. You click the state and you go to Georgia. I was like, oh my gosh, I have I'm really stepping it up now. <laughs> I, I remember this like this time when the internet was just people experimenting with HTML. Like the whole MySpace and GeoCities where people just customized things and figured out, oh wow, I have a lot of control. And that like fueled a lot of interest in programming and then turned people into self-taught coders. I, I kind of come from the same background. I, I also did that when I was young, I guess, and had no idea how all of this worked. I just I, I noticed that people seem to be able to do something with it that is technical, 
but doesn't require like complicated machinery. It's just like software, right? That's when I understood, oh, wow, I have this immense power. And then I, I went right into coding. But I, what I was, was going to say here is that you seem to have this kind of spirit of, oh, yeah, I can learn this, which is such an important spirit when you want to become an entrepreneur, right? Just the, the mentality of, hmm, what is design? Oh, wow, what is SEO, right? That the kind of not, oh, no, this is not in my domain, <laughs> pun intended. But, you know, the, th this is actually something that I want to learn to expand my knowledge of, the, of things. And I see this in what you're doing right now and what I've read and learned about you have been doing for quite a while. And I kind of want to talk about your this history that you just kind of hinted at from coming from one particular background, going into another one, because what you're doing right now as I, I guess you call yourself a domain name investor. Is that what it is? Like that, that seems to be a, a widespread field of many different activities that you all combine under one personal business brand. Can you tell me more about this? What is a domain name investor? What are you doing there? Yeah. Um, so uh, essentially, if I dovetail off the topic, please push me back on. So I'll, I'll, I'll try my best to explain how I got into domain name investing. So as I started teaching myself to code, um, I, I started, uh, it, it took a long time to get a site up on its feet, uh, to get it monetized, to get traffic. And then my brain started thinking, well, gosh, uh, what's stopping me from just finding somebody else's website? This is 2004, 2005. What's stopping me from just reaching out to somebody and saying, hey, can I buy your website for $5,000? And if they, if I can look at their traffic, I can determine uh, maybe from a conversion standpoint, uh, can I sell a product or service? What if I add Google AdSense on there? If I get a specific click-through rate for AdSense, I can monetize the traffic if they don't have AdSense on there. So I started uh, acquiring websites. I'd find, a, I'd look up uh, high search volume terms like uh, travel and tourism terms or a uh, specific uh, one site I purchased was Appalachian Trail, which is a hiking trail you know, up the East Coast in the United States. So uh, it, it actually didn't resolve. So I found the domain. Uh, the guy had just pulled it off. No, no, I correct myself. I'm thinking of a different domain I purchased. This one was still live. It only had a few pages of content on it. Reached out to the owner, see if he wanted to sell it, um, and then acquired it from him. And as I started buying and selling these sites and transferring all the content, you know, all the pages, the domain, I started understanding the importance of the domain name. So when I'd make a transaction, I would say the first thing with my, in my head would be, I need the domain. If I own the domain, I control everything for this. Because even if they give me the domain, don't transfer the content to me. I can either go screen scrape the content through uh, the Internet Archive or through other sources. So if I get the domain, that's the biggest hurdle. And I kept coming back to this domain name. I was like, this is a really, really important aspect. And I started kind of witnessing the impact that I could make uh, f being an outsider and buying a really good keyword descriptive domain name like Appalachian Trail, people started assuming that I was an expert on the Appalachian Trail just because I own this domain name. They'd be asking me questions. Where should we hike on? Uh, where should we uh, camp out on mile 105? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I need to find some experts on this because I can't answer this question. And people were just automatically assuming. And I was like, man, the trust and authority with these really good .com domains is impressive. And at this point in my career, Arvid, I was 35 or so. And I sort of felt like I was a little late into this development side. So when I noticed this domain, I was like, gosh, this, this kind of gives me a little fast forward. It gives me a quick unfair advantage. And I can uh, quickly start building some of these products and services on really good domains, like, well, how do I find a really good domain? I can't go buy them from the original uh, 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 purchasers, you know, years ago, because typically the domain, original domain investors, they're going to want 50, 100,000, a million dollars for a really good domain. And then I uncovered the, the domain expiration world where somebody doesn't renew their domain at the registrar. It goes up for an open auction on the internet. And, and it's simply, you just bid within a browser, you set up an account. Um, the two popular ones when I first started were Namejet and Snap Names. And essentially, demand expires, goes back to them. They 
place the domain up for auction before they re-release it. If there are no back orders and no one's interested, then it simply just gets re-released for open registration. And every day, roughly 50 to 100,000 domains expire. And so every day, it's, it's, I found it to be like, the, uh, like a silent auction, but it's also like a treasure hunt. And so you're like sifting through these domains, looking for really interesting topics. And what I found as I started digging through them, certain domains were inspiring me to, to build little projects. I would find one, oh gosh, what were some of the early ones? I mean, the, I, I would start building anything on, on you just, you know, C minus domain names if you want on, on a grading scale. I'd, I'd buy one, I'd build one on, you know, baby carriages, I did one. I did one on the, on llamas, on llama wool, um, but they weren't the best domains. And so I kept building these kind of piecemeal sites and getting a little bit of traction, but I wasn't, terribly inspired by some of the projects. And then my brain started morphing into, well, what if I just kind of pull back and, uh, and I was still working nine to five. So I had, a, I had a salary. I was like, what if I just stop this piecemeal and I save up, you know, five, 10, 20,000 bucks. And I just sit and wait and wait for an interesting domain. I got time. I, I think time was on my hand. I was like, I'll just wait and I'll just monitor every single day and wait for a domain that might strike my fancy and might uh, fit into a business model that I enjoyed. Um, and I'll get back in the, in the domain investing world. Uh, but, and that's when this was, when I kind of made that decision, it was late 2017, 2018. No, no, excuse me. This is 10 years before, uh, 2008-ish. And I waited about a year and a half, and that's when DudeRanch.com expired. Um, and the Dude Ranch vacation industry is, is real popular out west in the United States, where you can go visit an operating ranch. Uh, all ranches are different, but uh, you can either help herd you know, cattle on the ranch. You can go shoot shotguns if they have a gun program, hike, fly fish. I always compare to, uh, it's like summer camp for adults, essentially. You get to do all those kind of activities. And so I saw it. And since I had built the directory on my little bed and breakfast, I was like, this is, this would fit really well into a directory. I will help guide people to a dude ranch that matches their interest. Um, so I waited on it and then acquired it. Um, for roughly 18,000 bucks. It was 17,949 bucks. So I bought it at auction and I wrote a big essay on one of my sites on how I found it, how, my rough ideas on uh, what I thought I could afford or hopefully what I could acquire it for. Um, and that kind of took me down this domain name investing path on, well, this is interesting. Once you kind of get into the, uh, the monitoring expiring domain names, it's a for the certain type of person, uh, if you like auctions or, or treasure hunts, it's very, very addictive. And it's something I do regularly, almost every single day. I'm always pulling up. And right before we spoke, I was digging through just a few what's coming up today. It's like almost like my morning newspaper. Nice. And yeah. I yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so from a domain investment uh, standpoint, there are kind of two different camps. There are some folks who will buy and treat domain names like real estate, really buy it and hope that it appreciates some price and then sell it a few years down the road, uh, for hopefully a profit. And when I started down the domain name, I tried all three different, uh, they're essentially three different paths that you can take buy and hold. And hopefully it sells at a higher value down, down the road, uh, buy and and keep it and hopefully the existing traffic, say if you own water.com, you'd assume a fair amount of people are just going into the browser bar and typing in water and adding .com at the end, looking for maybe a water provider. And you can have Google AdSense or any kind of advertising um, uh, uh, marketplace provide ads on the page and you get a certain percentage of that advertising revenue. And then the third is development. And there aren't many domainers who develop. They a lot of domainers are somewhat lazy. They just want to set it up, set it and forget it and get their mailbox money every single day. Um, so I tried the buying and flipping. I wasn't very good at it and I found it kind of boring. I could never find a domain that was generating enough type in traffic to uh, generate any revenue from 
uh, uh, just an advertising perspective. But each time I started building, it was fun. And to your point, I was, I'd was i build a very, very rough site, but I'd learn just a little bit from building that one site. And then I'd try a new site. I was like, oh, okay, I learned that. But what if I added a you know a map on the homepage instead of just a whole bunch of links to all 50 states? I'll build a map and make it fancy, make it a little bit interactive. And then mobile came around. I was like, oh, how do I make it mobile responsive and make it really fast on a mobile device? How do I do that? I need to figure out how to do that to make, well, how do I find a really fast host? Because now it seems um, folks are staying on my site longer if my site is more responsive and it's a little bit quicker versus the shared hosting account I had on my old. Uh, yeah, so that started kind of taking me down. So I started slowly moving away from the investment side. But the interesting thing, Arvid, was when I'd try a project on a, on a good domain name, and if the project didn't work, my downside was, was not capped, but it was somewhat limited because oftentimes if I could buy the domain at auction, I'd be able to sell the domain sometimes at a profit. I'd try it. So the only thing I really lost is just my time and sweat equity in trying to build the project. Uh, call tracking is a good example of this one. I tried to build a call tracking application with a friend of mine. And I thought it was going to be a competitor to call rails, a big company in, a, in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Um, and I thought I'd build a, a kind of a stripped down, simplified call tracking application. Tried it and just laid an egg. And it wasn't a very good match for what folks were looking for. Um, but I bought the domain roughly for 20000 and then I sold it for roughly 120000 even after the whole project failed. And I sold it to Colrail. <laughs> that sounds like a good I'm not that good of an, of an investor. That was a <laughs> very lucky. I happened to know the guy who ran Colrail at that point. So he loved the domain. He kind of kicked himself for, for not seeing it within the auction world. I'm glad he didn't because that's the only reason I was able to grab it. Um, but I tried it. It failed. It didn't quite go down the path that I was expecting. Um, but then I was able to sell it for a profit. I was like, well, this is kind of, this is kind of good. Even if the projects don't work, chances are hopefully cross my fingers. I can sell it for the same price I bought it and then move on to the next project and try something else. It's interesting because it's an asset, right? Like a domain, having the ownership of a domain is already an asset, no matter if, if it's super valuable or not, but it's not just an idea. And that's kind of, you know, that's the difference that I see to many other approaches in building a business. If you get a domain first, like you're doing it, like intentionally that particular domain, not come up with a random name, try to find it, but like see a domain and think, okay, this could be a business. Then ownership of the domain itself is already, like you said, incredibly valuable just for the authenticity that the, the uh, dot .com domain suggests to your potential customers, the trust that they have in the authority, the, SE, the, the SEO juice that's already in it. Like who knows how, how much or how good it already may be ranking, right? Um, I, I find that super interesting because it's really completely orthogonal to what I understand entrepreneurship as, which is why I love talking to you because it's just so different to, to my perception because I come from this whole go into your community, understand what your audience, your future audience needs, their problems figure out a problem you want to solve, find a solution for that that fits into their workflow and then then think about a product and then think about a name and then think about a domain, right? It's like Correct. on the furthest other side. And that seems to work too. But I love how you completely flip this around. And I would like to talk to you more about this process from finding a domain to getting a business up and running. Because I feel lots of people out there are probably, they see something that they find interesting. Whenever I go through my Namecheap, outing myself as a Namecheap customer here, uh, list, I see interesting things happening there. And I see domains that I hadn't thought about, even like versions of the things that are already happening. Like, oh yeah, that could be interesting. And then I dismiss it because, you know, I have a different process, but I know that there are lots of people out there who might be interested. So how do you go from domain to business? How do you pick all your business models and figure out what you actually want to do? What, what business might be feasible for that particular domain? Yeah, it's a great question. So here's how it essentially started boiling down. The more small projects I've started building, and I'm, I'm very much... Uh, Daniel Vasallo and I have a very, very similar frame of mind on building these small projects, finding getting small wins where I learn more from small wins than I do from any type of loss or any kind of failure. The more small wins I have, the more I'm learning of what either customers or products and services need to do to meet market demand. 
So as I kept building these small projects, I, I found roughly three models, business models that seem to work well within my lifestyle. I tend to build I tend to build solo or I'm solo and then I partner with a subject matter expert. Um, so uh, Vidalia is a good example where I, I bought the domain, but then I partnered with my farmer in Vidalia and he is the Vidalia expert and I am just the web guy. Sometimes I call myself the CTOO, the chief technical onion officer, Arvid. And so I, I try to go down that path. So the three models that I roughly found that I enjoy building were the directory marketplace. It's, very, it's a very, very good fit for a solo builder, a solo founder, where you're simply aggregating information and making it easy for people to find products and services. Hopefully a good high ticket item like dude ranching was very attractive to me because the typical dude ranch vacation ranges in price from ten to twenty thousand dollars for a family of four. It's a big ticket item. And I was assuming that the dude ranchers were getting you know, roughly 30%, maybe 50% margin on that. And they already actively advertised in uh, online, offline, on radio. And so they were already comfortable with the idea of advertising online. So it'd be a little bit easier for me to, to pitch the product and service to them, pick the service to them. So directory marketplaces, I loved. And so for dude ranch, it was simply... Where do you find a dude ranch in Colorado? What kind of dude ranch do you want? Do you want one with a pool and do you need a tennis court? Or do you want one that's strictly uh, really hardcore uh, herding cattle and riding horseback rides you know, twice a day? And then just try to filter some of those options for the searcher. And that kind of goes into paid search, SEO, which was my old world, which I can apply some of those, or apply some of that expertise. Um, the second, was simply, honestly, a lot of this, I was just stealing ideas from other people. Other people had built products and services. A friend of mine built a job board for the nursing industry in Atlanta. And uh, he, uh, it was a very successful site and he had a, a very good exit on it for just nursing. So this idea of running a job board, he was doing it solo. He's a PHP developer, so he just built the whole thing himself. But then I discovered, you know, job themes and job board uh, themes within WordPress. I was like, oh, hang on now. Uh, I don't have a job board yet. I don't have the topic yet. But job boards, I'm simply I'm not packaging anything up. I'm not shipping anything out. I'm simply sharing information, just like the directory marketplace. Um, I am allowing jobs or I'm either seeding the jobs and also taking in free or paid listings for. Um, so job boards, big, big fan of job boards. Um, and I, uh, each time I do a lot of searches, there's always seems to be a lot of opportunity out there. Indeed, and simply hired and monsters, they they uh, they have too much. They're, they're uh, they've covered way too much ground, in my opinion. There's so much opportunity out there, in my opinion, for the job board to a small operator. If you focus on one industry and be able, and it allows you to really, I think, and I've been able to do it through the ranching industry through my little site called Ranch Work. Uh, and just posting ranching or equestrian focused or outdoors focused types of jobs. So job boards, I'm a big fan of. And then uh, the boutique, small kind of product service, mainly product and Vidalia fits into this one. Primarily, hopefully it's a product or service that is tough to find or does not appear on Amazon or makes it tough for any of these big Walmarts, uh, Amazons. If it's more difficult for them to sell and if you can serve an existing um, community and if there's search volume against it. So you can always search Google to see if there's demand. Are people, I'm always want to know, are people standing at the door waiting to buy a product and service? And can I build something to serve that market? And I can look at that through Google. I can look at search volume. How many times are people searching for Vidalia onions? How many times are they searching for buy Vidalia onions online or buy now? Sometimes they're looking for them, you know, at their grocery store, but they're very, very difficult to find around the United States. They're, they sell out really quick. They're a very boutique item. Uh, there's built-in scarcity just from Mother Nature. So when our season starts, onus is on my customers. You need to order. If you don't order now, then you're going to be out of luck when the season ends because we're going to be out. And my customers call and complain. Or not, they 
They moan and groan at the end of our season. They don't either get my last email or they waited too long and our season ends and it's over until next season. If you don't order right now, you're out of luck. So those, I started falling into these three. Uh, directory marketplace, job boards, and boutique products and services. So as I'm scanning, but there are lots of other ones. There's forums. I've always been interested in forums. My brother restores old Porsches, of all things. And so he is an active user in this this small, tiny forum for Porsche uh, aficionados. And a strange site, I think it's called Pelican Parts. Mm-hmm. He hangs on those things all day long, <laughs> every day, talking to Porsche guys. Yeah. Hey, do you have a do you have a muffler I can buy from? Hey, yeah, would you have a steering wheel for a 1967 911S? I'll buy it for you, five hundred dollars. Or he finds maybe he finds a barn find and it has some wheels that he doesn't need. He'll put the wheels up for sale on the forum. Um, and you just need a moderator. And oftentimes, the folks that I've seen that run forums, they just become the moderator, and they're just making sure people are being nice and not yelling at each other. And then you can monetize certain aspects of the forum. So as what I found myself doing, and the weird thing of it is as I started going, none of this was intentional. Um, I kept just kind of stumbling forward. Um, and as I started monitoring these domain name auctions, I just kept, my head just kept talking to me. That, that domain would come up. I was like, huh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, you could probably fit a, a job board on that or maybe a boutique product and service. Say if it's rumcakes.com. Um, I'm like, oh gosh, rumcakes. You could package them up. They have a pretty good shelf life. They're very popular around Christmas time. Um, maybe I could find a, a chef. I can't make them, but a lot of people make really good rum cakes. Um, and I could ship them out and charge this and pay the provider this. And maybe I could work. So I just... Uh, 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 naturally just started, you know, walk, reverse engineering business models on these domain names to see if they could potentially work and looking at search volume. Um, yeah. So those are kind of the three that I started kind of falling into. That's so cool because I initially I thought like your, your domain first approach felt like there's a there's a gambling uh, component to this on that there is a business model that fits but now that i hear you talk you had it all in the back of your mind like you didn't even look at just a domain name you looked at the domain name through the eyes of somebody who could immediately apply three plus different models of a of a system that potentially could turn into a good business like you had all of this already in there which makes this kind of a framework first approach the domain is like the second part because you already have these things in your mind you just need if you're looking for the opportunity to implement them which is genius i love this because not and, and another thing i just learned from you telling me this was not only did you know how to look for like supply and demand kind of things where you could position yourself in the middle a directory is exactly that right there's supply on the one side the demand on the other and you kind of facilitate that or even a boutique a service where you sell somebody else's product to an eager audience or a job board where you connect people who seek employment with the employers you you are finding these spots to mediate supply and demand and with your knowledge in in the search space you know how to measure it that's genius i i'm i'm just blown away by how you use all this knowledge and all these skills that you acquired to immediately spot opportunity which makes this something that I want to talk to you about um, that that seems to be be an actually quite complicated process. And it looks easy, find a domain, build a thing. But if you look at all the other steps that you took before, understand how you could potentially monetize it even before you buy it, th- that is not easy. Do, do you think um, it's, it's hard to do this? Like, do you consider this a, a, a rather complex occupation? Um... It's weird. I mean, coming from my background, it felt natural to me. So I just kept taking these baby steps. And like I mentioned earlier, none of this was intentional. I never sat down one day and said, I'm going to start buying domains and then I'm going to start applying these business models on them. Um, uh, Originally, it was I kept getting laid off at my companies, so I realized I needed to save myself. I can't rely on corporations or even these small startups that were raising tons of money, trying to go public, and then I get fired out of no fault to my own because they blow through all the money on you know 50 uh, full-page ads in the Wall Street Journal. 
and then I'm I'm suffering from some of this mismanagement of these companies. So I was like, I got to save myself. I need to figure out how this works. So that's what really started this path that I was on. Um, and then I was like, how do I save myself? I need to figure out how to run a build a business. I've already, I'm already hooked on the internet. I need to figure out how to do this on the internet. Well, how does this work? And that's when I just started doing, I need to learn how to code. Uh, let me, or just rough, not even fancy coding. It's just very rudimentary coding. And then started taking me down this path of, okay, well, how does this work? Okay. How does this, okay. How can I monetize that and make it very worth the price of admission, I always, oftentimes I want my pricing to be just no brainer pricing where it's just, oh my gosh, this is a course for, for a dude ranch when we uh, built it. Uh, now I was assuming roughly the, the transaction was 10 to $20,000. So I wanted our pricing just to be absolute no brainer pricing. So it was, when I started, it was, you know, two fifty a year, 500 a year. It, it, it was just throwaway money for the dude. Ranch. Of course, we're going to advertise on dudebranch.com. And that's what I got when I first went to the first. So I, I attended their conference, Arvid. So they have the dude ranchers host yearly conferences. And so I bought a booth and got a tablecloth and, and physically showed up. This was in Tucson, Arizona and showed up and that's when I started really seeing the impact of a really good domain. Dude ranchers were just walking up to me, looking at my tablecloth. It just said big dude ranch.com. And then that I had my, uh, my, I had my laptop there opened up on the good enough looking website and like, okay, that seems to check out and you're here. I can shake your hand. Okay. How much is it? And I started signing up people at the table. They didn't know how much traffic I had. They didn't know whether I was going to convert, but I was there at the conference. I had a website and I had the domain. I was like, holy cow, this works. Okay, this domain name thing is real. And I get to uh, I get to bake in this fun travel aspect. I was like, oh my gosh, at that point, I got really, really hooked on it, Arvid. And um, yeah, I did that for 10 years on the Dude Ranch side. But And I've gone on a tangent. What was your original question, Arvid? Well, no, me. actually, I, I want to keep talking about this because you just mentioned this is a 10-year project. How, how long do you usually run these little business experiments on top of any particular There's demand? No telling. I never know. I just keep... So I'm, I'll be going into my ninth year of Vidalia uh, next season. I ran Dude Ranch. I essentially sold Dude Ranch to my friendly competitor that he and I worked together. He owned GuestRanches.com. I wanted to fund birthdayparties.com, another directory that yep. is still struggling. Um, mm -hmm. And to your earlier point, uh, I am far from you know a hundred percent you know baseball hitter. I, I only sh I'm only really sharing the ones that work. Man, I've had so many crash and burns and ideas I try to push out that don't work. Call tracking is one that didn't work. I tried to build a um, a nationwide directory, uh, uh, nationwide uh, uh, search platform for restaurant health inspection scores. I thought that would be fascinating information to look at um, and failed incredibly on that. Um, but some of these odd ones, uh, but you know, it's, it is like baseball. You just keep taking a swing, keep taking a swing. So what's, what's going to connect? And I'm Nothing spoiled. wrong with that, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm spoiled where <laughs> once I started building these dude ranch projects, I was like, man, now Uh, for me, it's not even the success of the product or project. Now, I'm very stingy on the projects that I approach. Like, if I'm not, like, what's the term? Uh, uh, does this project spark joy? Like, do I wake up in the morning and want to go jump on that project and start serving these customers? If that isn't there, dude, I bail. I don't care if it's making money. I'll sell it to somebody else. I'm not going to wake up and go start work on some project that is not... You know, firing my engines and getting me excited every day. Dude Ranching did that. Ranch work, uh, it essentially evolved out of my Dude Ranch work. Uh, one of my friends there uh, owned the domain, and he ran a job board on it years ago, but it kind of abandoned it. And I found it in his portfolio. So he and I became friends. I was like, David, let me look at your domain portfolio. What do you have in here? Because you have some good names. And I saw Ranch work. He's like, David, what's this? He was like, oh, I used to run a job board on it. I was like, job board? Hang on, I know about Shane's site. He <laughs> ran a nursing site. What is this? Hang on. Oh, this is so nice. This is such a, uh, such a cool way of like figuring things out by just pulling things from left, right, and center. So what, what, a, what a great integrative approach. I love this. It's so, so cool. Well, this is uh, the on ranch work. So David had the domain, 
and tell me if you wanted to go on a different story. So uh, nah. again, I want to limit my downside as much as possible as I build these projects. So I didn't even buy it from them originally. So I just said, David, hey, how about you just point the name servers to me? I'll build the site. I'll rebuild it on WordPress with a job board theme. If I make any job board revenue, I'll give you 25%. I keep 75% just to see if I can get this thing on the feet. Uh, and David, my little friend, partner in the Dude Ranching industry, is so great. He's very similar to me. He was like, screw let's do it. I'll do it. And he went in there, changed the name servers to me. So I was like, let's go. Let me start working on this site. And so I started building it. It started getting re-indexed. Google started you know, uh, searching it. I started serving. And within the first week or two, I started getting paid submissions coming through. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Okay, here we go. Let me just dote on these people. Let me make sure if they don't fill the job within the 30-day, I'll rerun it for free. If they email or call any kind of questions, how can I serve them to make their jobs easier? And it was a good niche that Indeed wasn't serving them. They were gouging them for you know $1,000 job listings on Indeed. And I was charging at the time, I was thinking I was charging 25 bucks for a job listing. And then I dote on them to make sure it was getting filled. So I had to do a little bit of paid search as well, in addition to SEO, um, and then a little bit of social, not that much. Um, but then years later, started doing more paper advertising of all things, and like uh, in cattle magazines, um, hmm. farming magazines, and because I wanted to try to find these decision makers that, in in some cases, they aren't online. You know, the owner of the ranch is not online, and he's making the decision. So how do I reach that guy? Maybe he reads Progressive Cattle, which is a big ranching magazine. So I started buying little thumbnail ads in there. But uh, this goes back to Daniel Vasala. I'm never making these bets that are going to uh, put me at, at game over, making very, very small calculated bets, you know, buying a thousand dollar ad, testing it, seeing if there's any traffic with it or seeing if the baseline goes up for revenue. If it does, OK, something's happening there. Maybe I can consider that as well. Never trying to put myself in a position where, <laughs> where I have to go back to my old job, and I, which I could. If, if worst case scenario, I can always probably go back and get a job as a product manager somewhere. Um, but I want as many fallbacks as possible. So if if uh, if ranch work has a rough year, hopefully birthday parties or Vidalia or another project comes up and, and uh, can help support me. If I have one rough year and, and uh, or if Vidalia goes down, ranch work can maybe support me and help kind of build this little nest egg. Um, but you still actively monitor the, the whole expired domain space like every single day? I do. So you're still doing that? I do. It's a bad addiction, yes. Yeah. So it's it's you just it's fun to do, and so oftentimes you may see me share them within Twitter. So when I find yeah. a neat one, like a recent one was that was pretty neat, yachtweddings.com. Yep. I was like, gosh, that's a, a lot of people. And when you go into search volume, there's a lot of people searching primarily in Florida, uh, California. Um, but even if you just built the site for just those two uh, for those two states, you might have a fun. Ten to twenty thousand dollar little side business you run, and hey, then you get trips, you get business trips down to Florida, get to hang out on a few yachts, meet some interesting people in the yacht industry, um, and so that one seemed interesting. So whenever I find one that seems like a fun side project to build, because I see how building these small little projects help me, I try to encourage other folks just to try little projects because you can learn so much versus reading. I tend to learn best by, you know, jumping in the water and learning how to swim when I'm there versus reading a book on how to swim. Uh, I just jump in, start figuring out how this works. Um, so, yeah, so that one come up. So whenever I come up, with, whenever I uh, stumble across other domains, I'll just dump them on Twitter and say, here's here's a rough idea. Maybe somebody else is out there. There's nothing in this for me. I just found this. I'm I'm addicted to looking at domain names that are expiring and they're fun. Or even sometimes I'll find some that are for sale. Um, like, uh, what was it? Beachballs.com was for sale for a pretty reasonable price. So it was, oh, I can't remember, Arvid, 14 or 15,000 bucks. A lot of search volume, a lot of business going to, maybe it was Beachball. I can't remember if it was singular or plural. But um, that one, I was like, hey, if you are ready to pull the trigger on a big, project and you want to have a physical product that you box up and ship out here's an interesting one it's pretty reasonable price i'm surprised the domain investor hadn't bought it yet um yeah so those pop up but 
the wholesale price on expired is always attractive because they're you can buy them at a at a somewhat steep discount. I see how this can be addictive, like particularly if there's this yeah. discount to be had and all the opportunity in the world, you know, for you to figure out what you could do with it. What I what I really enjoy about your approach to this is that you are not afraid of going into a new field, like exploring a new industry. And yeah. what is even more impressive, particularly, I guess, to people who are introverts, self-declared introverts like myself, is just yeah. like showing up to a conference or going, trying to find somebody to work with. That I think is a hurdle that many people are afraid to take, like to throw themselves into something new, fe fearing, I guess, failure fearing not knowing what to do doing it wrong like messing things up all of all of this like looms over my head even just thinking about it and i know yeah. that you know if you, if you have an open personality and if you're just interested in stuff you quickly get beyond that stage and you actually get to results but i see this mm -hmm. this is a pretty high barrier of to entry for a completely new field how excited are you to dive into these completely novel industries is that something that by itself is alluring to you <sighs> Um, it was very difficult for Dude Ranch. Uh, a lot of imposter syndrome was going through my head when I, I started that project. Um, I mean, I, I, I still remember walking into that first conference I, I mentioned to you. Um, they had a, like a cocktail party the first night I'd shown up. They had a cocktail party outside in Tucson. They had those saguaro cactuses. Have you seen those like in the background of, of, uh, of, Looney Tunes of uh, Roadrunner and Coyote, those little, <laughs> all those in the background. All those are beautiful. The scenery was beautiful. So it's all these dude ranchers hanging out, cowboy hats, jeans, all hanging out. And I, you know, I have my uh, name tag with Peter Askew, dude ranch com. And uh, I remember walking forward. I was like, oh gosh, okay. Uh, Somebody's going to call me out and, you know, kind of what, you know, you, your brain starts overthinking and somebody's going to call me out. I'm a fraud. How do you, how dare you have this domain representing our industry? Who are you? You're from Atlanta, Georgia. At the time I was in, in Atlanta, I'm in Savannah now, but I'm like, oh, you're Atlanta, Georgia. How dare you take this domain? And you assume, but they're the most welcoming, but I, I had to just ignore that side of my brain and just, just almost go empty mind. I like the whole idea of just going empty mind and just walk in there and see what happens. If somebody wants to yell at me and say I'm a fraud, bummer. Let me just go maybe talk to somebody else and almost water off my back, trial it and uh, just uh, to see what happens. And so I was very uncomfortable walking into it. And uh, one of the first people I met in that conference was a guy uh, that ran a ranch up in Montana near Flathead Lake, and uh, he, he either had some exposure to web and a little bit, but he owned the ranch. And so I walked up to him and just said, hello, I'm Peter. I'm one of the vendors here. And so he, Harvey, he looked down at my name tag. He was like, Peter asking. He said, DudeRanch.com. And, like, and the first thing off his mouth was, how in the hell did you get that domain name? <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, it's a long story. Uh, it expired. And this is before I even started signing up advertisers. He later became an advertiser. But I was like, it's a, I was like, yeah, it's a long story. I, uh, I was lucky a dude ranch abandoned it. They did. They let it expire. It was a dude ranch up in New York state. And he was like, man, that's a good domain. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate and I'm very fortunate to have it. And I'm very fortunate to try to to use it for good, to help you guys, to help drive better leads, to lower, hopefully, your advertising expenses and provide another avenue for you guys to advertise online. And um, Yeah, that's, and me, that's what you do, right? That's, that's your skill. That's what you can give to these people who are ranchers. Like, they run a ranch. Correct. They don't have the time to build a complicated ad serving system or a, a, a network where people can connect with them. Like, they are on their ranch tending to their cattle, tending to their horses. And you're the guy that was lucky, but is also really interested in helping them. That's kind of how I feel about this. Like you just showing up there, like nobody else did that, right? You did that. Like there was no other domain guy very likely showing up. So that's cool. Yeah, and here's the crazy thing too, Arvid. Uh, on that site, outside of the whole imposter syndrome and trying to get out of my skin, to just walk into this conference and give it a shot, there, at the time, there were roughly three to four other dude ranch 
directory marketplaces. I was roughly the fourth or fifth one coming in. So it was, I wasn't like the first idea to come up with this marketplace directory. I thought I could make a better one than some of the existing ones there. But number two, I had the name of the industry. So I'm in here trying to wedge myself into this industry, but um, uh, 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 I didn't necessarily let that scare me away. Where I, I would have said it could have scared me away. But in some ways, those other sites had almost validated the directory marketplace idea for me. They're already paying. Some of these ranchers are already paying. I don't mind coming in as the, at the beginning, the low cost option, then slowly maybe stair step up some of my pricing. Um, but I wasn't like, it, which kind of taught me, I don't have to have, you know, the Uber idea or the next Airbnb. I can simply have a really good domain, find a business model that works, that either drives leads or solves some sort of unique problem for these businesses and then lean on that good domain name almost as a co-founder. Sometimes I say these domain names are my co-founder because they're that important. They do that much heavy lifting for me because they're branding themselves in many ways. And then I can go on the back end and try to build the sites, get some good looking logos, make them fast, optimized well, and then really look at the analytics. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, there were already four just for some of your listeners uh, it don't necessarily get thrown off if there are already three or four. There are all, always ways to create maybe it's just a little bit either different bells and whistles or make it simpler. Um, but it is weird looking back after a couple of years. I was like, weird, I'm surprised I even built that because there were like four or five others. <laughs> it's validation though, right? If, if they are already Correct. there. Yeah. 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 Th there might just as well be a fifth one, right? If there, if there was yeah. a fourth one and they survived that. Yeah, that's, that is really cool. Yeah, it's, uh, let's talk about domains for a second here because I see yeah. you're, you're very much established in the .com world and you recently tweeted something where you said you once developed a site on a .net domain and you're disgusted <laughs> and ashamed. Can you just talk <laughs> to me more about like... I like self-deprecation, <laughs> so I like just making fun of myself. So what is it with top-level domains? How important is, is that, the TLD, for a particular domain? Um, I only lean on .com because I've, so the more conferences I attended and physically hung around either the decision makers or even the general public, um, I would notice how ingrained this .com name is, how much it's been branded since the mid nineties, Arvin, and how many marketing dollars have been spent educating the general public that it is the gold standard for websites. And what I started noticing, and this was after I got into the domain investment world, but it, it even further entrenched me and, and solidified how important this .com name was. Uh, certain times, and a few times it was this .net domain or other domains. If I would watch other times, other people's domains, uh, say it was a .co or .io, uh, which are perfectly fine extensions. Not to say you couldn't build anything on any kind of, of domain, but it might require different uh, marketing channels. You may have to market and advertise and educate the public that it's an .io and not a .com. But I would watch decision makers or the general public. I would, I would tell them a domain. I would tell them to visit, say, uh, maybe to use an example, duderanch.co, which I don't even think exists, but I would tell them, okay, go visit the site, duderanch.co, and I would watch that. I would be standing over their shoulder, and I'll see them type. I would tell them to go to .co, and they'll go in there and just type .com. Ignore what I said after the dot, and they just type in .com, .org, .io, anything. And I would watch them do this over and over and over again. I was like, gosh, this is how important that .com name is. Everything after the dot, they're going to automatically assume. And if I have an alt TLD, I'm going to have to really educate them that it is a .org or a .net because they're automatically going to assume. And then guess where all my emails are going to go? If they try to send it to me at whatever .net, they're going to send them to .com. And I've seen that happen before. Uh, really sensitive documents, tax reports, uh, you know, bank account statements. Um, my university in Mississippi, uh, their nickname is Ole Miss, and I helped them acquire OleMiss.com. And for a short period, I had the domain name under my control before I pushed it over to them. And oh my gosh, the, the emails that were, so Ole Miss uh, primarily operates on .edu. And the emails that were coming through 
it, it was just, I was like, oh my gosh, this is just people assuming they wanted to send an email to arvid at olmiss.edu, arvid at olmiss.com, here's our bank account statements, or here's the check, or here's my routing information for my bank to make sure that my payment to the university, and I was like, gosh, this is another, that didn't get talked about as, as much as the email aspect of having these uh, you know, private communication going back and forth uh, for a .co.io.com. So it really just solidified. After I'd really gone into the uh, .com world, it just solidified. I just need to focus on .com. Um, and that was more just a joke and not trying to smear anyone who's built on .net. <laughs> I built on uh, one, but I was like, gosh, this is hard. Now I'm, I'm spending half my time trying to educate everyone that I'm .net and I'm not .com. Um, all rather than just having the domain and everybody assume when they look for a dude ranch and the amount of type in traffic I got for dude ranch.com was one, it was 50 visits a day, roughly people just going up into the browser bar, typing in dude ranch and adding com because they wanted to either find one or maybe be inspired or, or be kind of pushed in the right direction to make their selection. And I see it for onions.com. I see it for Vidalia. Uh, and my friend build, uh, built a site for the bobblehead industry. You should have an old Ar Arvid. Uh, Warren Royal, he runs a bobblehead business, and he was a lot of the inspiration. He, he was almost my North Star. Uh, so he bought the domain bobbleheads.com. Wow. And he owns singular and plural. So he owns bobblehead.com and bobbleheads. No experience in the bobblehead industry. He just bought the domain because he thought it was cool. So he bought it right before the 08 U.S. election, and he started selling three bobbleheads. Uh, it was Clinton, Barack, and John McCain, and he sourced them from other people in his, you know, in the pretty typical in his basement. And he started selling out. Almost all of his traffic was type in traffic. Just somebody wanted a bobblehead, they go, "Where do you get a bobblehead?" Well, you just go to bobbleheads.com, I guess. Bobbleheads.com. He had no SEO, no paid search. Everything was type in traffic, and. Uh, I talk to him quite often. He's local here in Georgia, so I see him quite often. And he was like, yeah, that's how I got this whole thing on the feet, uh, on its feet. So he spent roughly 30000 I think, for the singular and then was able to acquire the, the uh, no, excuse me, he got the uh, plural for, I think, thirty, and they got the singular for roughly 20000 So all in was in for around 50000 for, And now he employs, I think, 13 or 14 people uh, north of Atlanta and does almost all the presidential figures. He's gotten uh, relationships with um, all these kind of foundation boards to make presidential figures with bobbleheads. Um, and does, he has some uh, contracts, I think, with Walmart to make these collectible bobbleheads for them. It's fascinating. His office is just littered with bobbleheads everywhere. It's amazing. Um, uh, but yeah, so I quickly realized, back to the dot-com stuff, uh, in order to keep this moving, I need to keep this simple. Um, I don't need to overthink it. Focus on .com and then try to find an interesting term that might be fun for me to develop uh, where I can really solve an interesting pain point potentially, but be patient with it. I, I, I tried to make sure I was just patient, wait for the right one, give it a shot. If it doesn't work, uh, try my best to learn. I tend to learn best from uh, projects that work, but if it doesn't work, don't beat myself up too much about it. Try to learn a little bit. See if I can sell the domain. Move on. It's over. Go to the next project and try something else. Yeah, and I think you've you've gone through a lot of domains at this point, right? You probably had a lot of little projects here and there. One thing that I do wonder, as you had so much exposure to all these different fields, are there any industry industries that you would never go in or never go in again <laughs> after having some experience with that? Like, is, is there anything you want to stay away from at this point? Um, probably, uh, as far as me doing, it would be like custom software development. I am not, I'm not very good at custom software. If I do it, I would either partner with a subject matter expert and let them do the, cu the, custom software development, and I can give feedback on how look and feel might be, or maybe SEO or paid search, lead generation, uh, the conversion aspect. Uh, that I learned that from call tracking. I wasn't very good at, at custom software development. Um, and uh, the hardcore sales, the started noticing like the two different types of sales that um, 
at least that I'm getting exposed to is, uh, and I tweeted this out the other day, um, there's one type of, of business that I build that sometimes requires a face-to-face -face dude ranch, was an example. It, it helped that I was physically there shaking people's hands and making the conversion there versus ranch work where somebody's visiting the site. It's almost self-serve. They come in, make the decision themselves, hit the purchase button, it pings Stripe, the, the money is paid, they take their cut, and it gets deposited into my bank account. I vet and curate the listing and post it live. And what I've found is I, I, tend, to pr I tend to prefer building these self-serve models with maybe one project that is very front-facing. Birthday parties is that for me right now, but it, it keeps struggling because st I'm still getting out. It's getting better from the COVID aspect, but it's that industry is so fragmented. I'm, I'm having a lot of challenges on how I find dude, ran dude ranching. It was nice because they all hang out in this one conference that I could go visit. And then I could go visit them individually when the, when the summer starts, which was fun for me to do. Um, the birthday party industry is typically like family entertainment centers. So it'll be, you know, uh, rock climbing walls or go-kart centers or uh, ba batting cages, very fragmented. And I'm, I'm, I'm working through this right now on how I try to find where do they hang out? Uh, some of the existing places they hang out are probably a secret clown car somewhere where all the birthday clowns hang out, like in a really, really I small confined space. I would probably fit space. in very well there if I could find that <laughs> clown car. I, I um, bet there's forums somewhere, hidden forums. I found this with lots of communities, uh, like these special interest communities. There are there's some forum from the from the nineties, like a PHP bulletin board that nobody knows. Where, that's not even listed on Google because n nobody ever links there. But there's a community of like twenty thousand people. I, I bet there's something in, in that particular industry too. But that's super hard to find, right? That's that's always the, the challenge is to to find that one particular community to then inspect and build these relationships with people. Yeah, that must be hard. Yeah. Um, so I did find those too. And so I, I tend to try my best to focus on these products. Vidalia is a good example. They show up on the site. They see a picture of me and Aries, the farm, uh, our pricing models, where we ship within these, uh, this time frame. Hopefully they think the site is, is well designed. And then they make the decision purchase and the order comes to me. And then I go through and start fulfilling the orders and, and looking at, uh, uh, or at least scheduling the uh, the orders to get shipped out um, versus the sale. But what I found what I found, Arv, is I, I learn a lot when I'm physically face to face selling, where I'm trying to serve someone. That's taught me a lot. So I, I do try to force myself into those situations because it does. To your point, it takes me out of my shell because I'm I'm like you. I'm I'm stuck behind a computer. A lot of times I I try to. A lot of times I consider like my job is. Uh, my job working on this computer is to distance myself from working on this computer <laughs> to get whatever I'm working on should be a key to get me out of here in some aspect. Dude ranching. I go on thousand mile road trips. I go visit dude ranches all around the Rocky Mountains. Wonderful. Vidalia. I get to go hang out at an onion farm in Vidalia, Georgia, and hang out with just these wonderfully, you know, kind and generous people that. You know, they they work the earth and they grow this really amazing boutique onion and they're just salt of the earth people really just great people to hang around so i learned something from them so that's what i've found it's like well a lot of times when i look at domains it's like what adventure can this thing take me on uh selfishly what yeah. like domain what are you going to do for me I, I know i can build you what are you going to do for me is this going to teach me something can i can I hopefully support myself? Can I serve someone? Can I serve a, a farmer? Uh, can I serve a dude rancher or a family entertainment center provider? Um, but there needs to be a little in it for me. I want something fun. I don't want to wake up and like, oh, okay, I got to do my expense reports again because I did X, Y, Z. But birthday parties like, hey, I'll go to a, an arcade because they're one of my customers and play the play a claw game all day. I'll do that. It, uh, but I haven't got the thing to make money yet. So, but that seemed attractive for the birthday parties one. I was like, I like claw game. That's fun. And oh gosh, I love that. my job could be going to visit places and play claw game. I'll yeah. do that. I'll try that and see what happens. That sounds like such a fun way, like quite literally a fun way to approach building a business, to look for the thing that's in it for you and everybody else. So a yeah. very expansive kind of thought that starts with yourself. 
is selfish and becomes selfless, like just through radiating out uh, empowerment and helping people, serving people. And what I really, really appreciate about this is that you come back to mentioning the connection that you built with the people that you serve, either through going to conferences or making sure that they can get as low friction as possible in the things that they need or get the highest quality goods because you know the people who are working the soil, who are growing the onions. Connection is such a central part of entrepreneurship do, done well. And I see you do this so well, even here with me and sharing your story. You, you, I, I'm really happy that I that I got to talk to you today. And I think you are a wonderful person to follow for advice, for cool domain ideas, even if there's a .NET in this at some point. But um, where can people follow you? Where can people learn more about you and your journey and be inspired by you and your work? No, thank you. I, I typically hang out on Twitter. Um, at uh, search bound, which is a nod to my search world, paid search. So I was, I'm always, and then bound was B O U N D S E A R C H bound. So I'm always either uh, search bound looking for a product or a project or a domain or SEO. That's how all search bound came around. And the dot com was available. I could hand register. So I was like, oh, good. I can hand register. There you go. <laughs> uh, primarily Twitter. And then I write. Um, uh, let's see. I write. You can primarily find all these little essay things that I write. If you just go, if you type in, it's a .org. So I have my last name .org, askyou.org. And then it's like a little homepage for all the stuff that I write or projects that I'm working on or just things that I'm building that are just simply fun. I just do it anyway. I don't care. I recently moved to Savannah and their, their kind of central park down here is called Forsyth Park and has these live oaks are it's beautiful and with with moss uh, uh, hanging down from the trees. And so I was like, who owns ForsythePark.com? So I checked it. It had been owned for like 20 years and, and just lo and behold, they didn't renew it. Nobody back ordered it. So it went out for open registration. So I don't think it'll ever make me any money, but I bought ForsythePark.com. I was like, I, I wanted to learn how to build this uh, website builder called Dork. So I built it on Dork. But um, primarily, going back to your question, primarily uh, on Twitter at SearchBound and then AskYou.org will link to some of the essays if you want to read, like how I bought Dude Ranch, how I monetized ranch work, um, how I got laid off a lot and forced me into this corner. Like I didn't want to be an entrepreneur in many ways, but I'm glad I am. And it taught mm -hmm. me that I am. Um, I write some of those essays through a site called Deep South Ventures, uh, but it's linked on on uh, askyou.org. Well, I'm glad you are an entrepreneur. I'm glad you have been backed into that corner and you figured out a really cool, insightful and inspiring way to leverage the technology that exists to build things that people need. So thank you so much for being on my show today. That was an awesome and really, really inspirational conversation. I can't well, wait to look I, for domains now, honestly. And I, I didn't do this before. I'm now inspired to do this. It's really cool. Thanks so much. No, I appreciate you having me on. Thank you, Arvid. And that's it for today. Thank you for listening to The Bootstrap Founder. You can find me on Twitter at Arvid Kahl, A-R-V-I-D-K-A-H-L. You'll find my books and my Twitter course there as well. If you want to support me and the show, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, get the podcast in your podcast player of choice, and leave a rating and a review by going to ratethispodcast.com slash founder. Any of this will really help the show. So thank you very much for listening and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.